Euh, Aujourd'hui, on a avec nous Dr. Malika Saravan, euh, gériatricien, euh, qui est basé à Amen, à Chennai, avec nous pour donner de plus des informations sur la vaccination chez les personnes âgées. So, welcome Dr. Malika uh, Saravan, uh, who did his geriatric medicine in uh, Delhi and is a consultant geriatrician. Uh, working at the Covery Hospital Chennai, who will give us more information on vaccination in older adults. If you have any question, please ask us at the end of the presentation. Yes, you may uh, so, Doctor. Thanks, Dr. Dimla. Uh, thanks for the generous introduction. And with that, uh, we will proceed. Vaccination in older adults, which is a very uh, less perceived topic. We shall start. So, first we have to perceive what is uh, uh, healthy aging. So, healthy aging is not uh, WHO defined as uh, developing and maintaining the functional ability, and that enables the well being in the old age. So, what is the functional ability and uh, what is well being? It has two parts one is maintaining the intrinsic capacity, and the other is the, uh, maintaining the environmental characteristics. To maintain the intrinsic capacity, two things are important. One is mental and physical aspect of the health. The other thing is to uh, able to interact with the home, community, and the society as the social aspects. So if both combine, one can maintain the functional ability. And if you are able to maintain both domains, it is considered as engaging guilty. So let's consider uh, this picture. There are two older uh, people who is all uh, uh, similar. 60 years of age. So, are they looking similar and functioning similar? No? This is what is we call it as the differences uh, between the chronological and the biological age. So, chronologically, they may be of 60 years of age, and but uh, biologically, they are functioning at a very different different level. This is what we call it as a frailty. And uh, the right side I have uh, in the right, uh, shown the picture of frailty from very fit, well, managing well, and uh, become vulnerable, then mildly frail. This is where the persons will lose their functional status. Their daily uh, activities like birthing, they're taking birth, eating food, independently. And when they become uh, moderately frail or become more sensitive, they will uh, lose their independence and they will dependent on one another. There are various causes of frailty and various interventions and various uh, causative factors to uh, in, uh, in causing cells to our body when we are aging and one of them are infections and before that going on aging is generally considered as an inflammatory state those who are sustaining the inflammation and uh, passing through the inflammation is considered aging successfully and those who are living longer. Those who are uh, passing to, uh, living along with the inflammation, they will experience successful physiological aging. In those where there is no adaptation to the ongoing inflammation or the mediation, they will develop age related uh, diseases, disabilities. So, aging is uh, con con generally in uh, science terms, it is called as the inflammation aging. And if you are able to maintain the anti uh, inflammation and the able to maintain a successful life, you are considered as anti-inflammatory and you are aging very successfully. That is always correlated with the longevity of the person. So, why aging is, uh, what, how aging is related with immunity and infections? And uh, we all know that with aging, the immunity is waning. And uh, for aging, we have to meet the infection to our group of uh, who gave yes, successfully we should sustain any serious infection in the midlife. Okay. So, in both cases, we need successful vaccine, vaccinations. Because of the claim, we need to boost our immunity, we need vaccines. In the younger age, we need to uh, have successful aging. We should not develop any hospital, any disability during the body life. So, we need vaccines. Um, Dr. Divla. Users. Dr. Divla. Yes. If you allow me, yes. let me well, let me say a few words of welcome to doctor, then you carry on. Eh? So, okay, Dr. Manika Saravanan, good, Hello, sir. good, good afternoon, Parshuraman here. 
Well, yes, thank, I want to thank you very much. I couldn't be there at the beginning. I just want to thank you very much for kindly agreeing to offer this uh, very interesting uh, talk, you know, to, for our Mauritian seniors. And Dr. Divla, with the head of our medical uh, department here, uh, will be with you and will also share with you some of the concerns, uh, the medical concern of the seniors in Mauritius, and with your wide experience, your uh, you know, and your uh, commitment to share your own knowledge, I'm sure this uh, program will be very interesting and very useful also. So I want to thank you. I just wanted to thank you. And I will be, I'll be in Chennai on, uh, in October, next, next week in fact, and I look forward to seeing you again. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for thank giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. We're very happy. Thank you. So thank you. Okay, Dr. Thank Divla, you. you can carry on. Eh? Yes. Thank you, Dr. And uh, so that what is generally uh, we are perceiving that vaccines so we are only just to prevent the infection. So in reality, it is more than uh, preventing an in, uh, infection. So vaccination is not only as a response to illness or infection, but it is it can be a potential anti-aging intervention because. We have to get the uh, uh, vaccinate ourselves to prevent uh, ourselves from uh, getting any disability in the middle life to age successfully. As far as why aging to prevent, uh, to maintain our independence, we have to uh, maintain our immunity, we need vaccination. So it works with the both case. So the vaccination nowadays changed from response to infections or illness. It is potentially considered as an anti-aging intervention. Just sharing uh, some demographic data, we can really see in the 80s, the more developed uh, regions were containing uh, the more aging populations. But nowadays, the more aging population will is in the uh, low middle income countries, which is once considered the demographic uh, dividend. Now they are moving to the other part as they are developing. Generally, developed nations are developing or industrialization is associated with uh, 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 longevity of the people and also decreasing uh, fertility. The, so there is a demographic shift will happen and happening recently, especially with the low middle income countries. So increasing lifespan should uh, match the increasing the health span. So uh, the lifespan is not necessarily uh, the health, uh, matching the health span or the lifespan we cannot equate to the health span. So what is the health span, how to maintain the health span? We need and rising, uh, understand the uh, uh, needs of the elderly. We need a aging programs and we need health policies for that. So why we are, everyone will talking about why the child is uh, born or uh, this one, you have to give TB vaccine, you have to give measles vaccine, you have to give mumps vaccine. There is lack of immunization in the adult population, especially with the older population, which is, we have to understand why. Because we uh, we can give uh, max mass vaccination drive for the children. Uh, as per example, in India, there is a pulse polio vaccination is conducted. The same day, same group, less than six years or five years of children are mass vaccinated with the oral polio vaccine, regardless of the state. So, because they are a very homogeneous group, there are higher primary contacts. And children uh, develop higher vaccine preventable disease. Example, diarrhea or rotaviral vaccine is there for uh, this to be prevent serious infection. There is a BCG vaccination is there, and the polio vaccines are there. In, con in contrast, we cannot. Uh, compared with the water population, which is heterogeneous, the biological age and the chronological age are different. Each one different functioning in a different level. So, why vaccine preventable? Uh, how the vaccine preventable uh, research in the water adults? There is lack of adult uh, immunization. Second thing is the epidemiological shift, which many uh, people or many countries are coming to turn term uh, with. And the third thing is immunosenescence. Immunosenescence is uh, nothing but um, as aging is uh, involution process, the ability to mount uh, infection, uh, in inflammation against the inf infection will decreases. So this is called as the immunosenescence. It works in a both way. While the inflammation is uh, decreases, the ability to uh, elicit 
uh, immunity through vaccination also differences. There are various methods or various techniques uh, in laboratory level or community level to overcome this. So, just uh, I'm sharing uh, uh, I think how the, the immunity is going through the other things. So, when a child is born, uh, give birth, uh, newborn immune system, there is a risk of infection because a newborn is born very sterile. So, there is a well developed structured immunization program is happening here due to the tuberculosis vaccine and uh, pneumonia vaccines and the rotaviral vaccines and everything. So, the uh, disability in the childhood is very much uh, prevented. Example, uh, polio, uh, polio, polio is a very disabling disease. So, you put the polio vaccination in the, uh, in the population, you prevent the disability. Likewise, the pneumonia, likewise the tuberculosis, if you have a child with tuberculosis, in the example, in a child with tuberculosis meningitis, which carries 40% mortality, considering uh, the patient has to, uh, if a year, year less than two-year-old or one-year-old child get the diseases, uh, it may cause some developmental delay. So, it will impact the child's life during the rest of the period. So, we are enabling the vaccine, targeting the vaccine preventable disease in the younger age group to maintain uh, until they are reaching the adoles uh, childhood or adolescence. During the childhood or adolescence, the immune system matures. So, whatever the vaccination because sensitize them, they will develop antibodies that they will protect themselves. But once the adult start started, the immune system is getting weakening partially due to the in process of involution and aging. So, when the immune system waning of the risk of infection again going, will be going high. So, the older adults will be susceptible to more infections, more severe infections, disability and independence. And because there is a lack of uh, national guidelines, lack of vaccine coverage, because of the low awareness. Because many of these uh, immunization programs in the childhood are in uh, Younger population group will uh, they got started in the 70s and 80s, where is life expectancy even in the industrialist countries where we will be like 45, 50 or 55 like that. So they are more targeting the younger population. Once the population expanded and the water population is growing on, so now they are they are coming to terms with the, the vaccination the old age. We will see in the coming slides. And why the where immunity is waning in old age? So, aging, there is signal senescence I have uh, talked about, and there is uh, uh, inflammatory shift. There is uh, both uh, inflammation and uh, even a senescence happening, which means the good cells which uh, fight in the uh, infection and other parameters will be decreasing, and the bad uh, inflammatory markers which might go against, uh, uh, which might increase, that will accelerate the age-related diseases and uh, other degenerative diseases. So, if the maintaining of balance is maintained, so we can age in healthily and we can maintain the independence. The, some other demographic data. So, just uh, the pneumonia uh, deaths in the uh, specific regions among the specific age groups. So, we can uh, see the uh, in uh, Sub Saharan Africa and the South Asian population. In the more than 70 years, the proportionate deaths are more happening in the uh, 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 low middle income countries where it's the sub-Saharan Africa and the South Asian population. We, whether we can uh, see that in the developed countries in North America or uh, Europe, uh, they have more older population. So they are contributing to the uh, more. And pneumonia is the leading cause of death across all ages. One, uh, there are two causes uh, for that. One thing is, there is a, uh, we can see the neonatal sepsis and meningitis, typhoid or encephalitis are waning off. One of the things is, we are considering knowledge and we are covering all vaccine preventable diseases. And these diseases like neonatal sepsis with the excellent hand washing and whooping off, we are vaccinating everything during the children. The excellent vaccine coverage in the children leading to the reduced mortality uh, in this period. Whereas, Pneumonia is still leading the leading cause. Even the deaths due to pneumonia are greater than the COVID because of uh, past two and a half hours. 
uh, two years because of the COVID uh, pandemic, the attention was shifted to uh, COVID. So what are the causes uh, which accelerate the pneumonia deaths in the water population, especially in the 70 plus years, mainly the smoking, uh, outdoor air pollution, and your household air pollution, which is less studied example, people are doing puja inside the home, they are uh, letting other bodies or this thing. This kind of can cause air pollution. Sometimes biofuel based cooking or frying this kind of uh, can cause indoor air pollution or household air pollution, which can predispose to pneumonia also and the second hand smoke and uh, alcohol use. And this is a age specific comparison of mortality. So in the 90, uh, 1990s, where the population expansion is happening in the well, we can see uh, the mortality in the uh, 5 to 14 or in the middle age group or in the early uh, young old are remaining the same. Whereas the under 5 mortality, which is uh, more than 300 or 350 deaths uh, uh, in the uh, initially under 5 population, has come down very lesser than approximately 105 per 1 lakh deaths in the recent years. Primarily due to the hand washing technique, attention to the uh, 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 vaccination and uh, infection control and nutritional, various nutritional programs and, they, and uh, you know, uh, community nutrition programs. Whereas the death in the 70 plus population will remain the same in US 300 per one lakh, one lakh per people. In the pneumonia, especially the infectious disease, follows a uh, vaccine preventable disease, in otherwise I will call, follows a U-shaped curve across the life course. It is similar in the under, under five population. It is also similar in the young old or the middle old population, where is in the 70, uh, 70 plus years population that deaths and they are almost similar. Whereas there is UNICEF and various uh, uh, agencies to carry forward the vaccination in the younger population, create awareness and government policies. And the, when, uh, for our children, when coming to the older adults, the policy is uh, very scarce and the awareness is very lacking and the commitment from the all parties from the health government and uh, policies are uh, very less. So, what is the efficacy of the pneumonia vaccine? It is not uh, related to one study or one age group. So, we can uh, see in the multinational group population, the US, Japan and Netherlands. So, in the area, it is causing various effects and various benefits in, uh, in uh, uh, general. So, in general, it is decreased the death uh, ranging from 10 to 14 percent of the population and it is also decreasing the invasive pneumococcal disease. Invasive pneumococcal disease is like you need, uh, it is like developing very uh, cough with the phlegm or cough with sputum or need uh, any mechanical ventilation or abscess in the lung. Some kind of serious pneumonia infection is greatly reduced at least the effect size range up to 5%. So there is an epidemiological shift while there is infection. It is the same. So increasing vaccine coverage among the women. So the herd immunity is maintained uh, in the children. So they will not let break. A few years back, there is a measles outbreak in India where most of the university students are most affected. So why vaccination? We uh, in general, it prevents infection and it is prevents uh, hospitalization and death or uh, health by uh, maintaining dependency. Apart from that, it will cause there is more to the vaccination. So, cardiovascular and the cerebrovascular benefits. In the operational study, that uh, influenza vaccination reduced the incidence of stroke and uh, heart attack by uh, approximately 20%. This is the age uh, from your study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. We can see at least vaccine offers protection. Over the vaccinated, they have less incidence of getting uh, any uh, heart attack or stroke in the first 20 uh, 30 days of the infection. And uh, why for those who are not uh, vaccinated, even generally a community acquired pneumonia can accelerate. Uh, 
the heart failure or developing abnormal heart rhythms or heart attack. This may be due to the uh, precipitating the existing risk factors in the patient or uh, comorbidities in the patient. So, we were uh, having acute uh, suffering uh, acute cardi cardiac complication during the acute uh, during a pneumonia episode. Two thirds of the patients uh, were died. And the effect is not uh, just uh, limited to the pneumonia in the lungs. It can be experienced with the singles, singles as a zoster, uh, zoster also. In uh, certain sites of zoster infection, that is uh, herpes zoster ophthalmicus, the risk of stroke increases. The effect is more uh, in the first three period, first three months of the period. And uh, even after a year, whoever had shingles, they have higher heart attack risk. So eventually, when there is a patient admitted for stroke or heart attack, they may be having these having additional infection or something like that. So usually, these infections are associated uh, with the uh, stroke, heart attack, and all these things. However, causality is yet to be established. So, so just want to talk more about influenza. So influenza just be viewed as it is a non-serious infection. So it may be just a flu in the middle-aged population, but in older patient, the effect and severity is influenza is underappreciated because in older adults, uh, it is just not hospital discharge is not important. After the discharging from the hospital, how they are able to live their life is more important. Uh, this is a follow-up study. So, just uh, patients with uh, more than 847 admitted with respiratory illness, 346 were found to be influenza. About the 12% were died due to influenza, which is higher than other respiratory illness. Maybe due to bacteria, other flu, other uh, respiratory virus illnesses, influenza is much higher. And due to the influenza, approximately 20% of them has experienced a functional decline. Functional decline is which is they were not able to carry out the previous uh, uh, functions they are carrying. It may be ranging from uh, doing uh, advanced areas, which may be financing, auditing, or uh, higher level cognitive functions to uh, acting in IADL as we call instrumental activity dependent living, which is like. Uh, going to shops, buying, uh, making a telephone, buying a newspapers, uh, uh, making a call, doing financial uh, transactions. And what is known as among 10% of the patients have uh, uh, functional decline, 10% have moderate functional decline, which means they will lose their daily activities of living. The daily activities of living uh, is known as they have dependent on the other people for their dressing, for their uh, eating, for daily toileting, for daily taking bath. So influenza not only causes serious infection, it will causes even causes functional decline and uh, sometimes catastrophic disability on the survivors. So it might be what we consider vaccines every year. I have to take influenza vaccine or I have to take so much of vaccine. They are expensive. So. It is considered as considerable cost saving. How? Because a recent analysis showed a life sports immunization is less expensive than a 3.4 osteoporosis, which you have to take six years of injectable uh, zolindronic acid, and then two years of gap, then again you have to take the other, or your lipid uh, protecting the uh, lipid pre prevention, you have to take uh, steak, uh, statins or fibrates. <coughs> The cost benefit you have incurred from the protection offered by the vaccines and the cost of vaccine is much, much, much cheaper. So this is the frail tip. So any stressor, each individual, it is a life course. It is a continuum. And any stressor can cause a frailty. From robust people to pre-frame, they can make to another stressor, they make the frame. And when the another stressor happens, they will lost their independence, they will become dependence. Once the dependence set in, they will become disabled. So, this is called the life course vaccination. In yellow life vaccination, we prevent uh, 
uh, we be vaccinating the children for the vaccine preventable diseases uh, to for the uh, until they are vaccine immune uh, immune system develop so they can have a very uh, uneven full and uh, yeah, yeah, excellent adult food so once the uh, immunity wanes off there are the uh, risk of infection and uh, aggressive infection going up if we didn't uh, vaccinate them appropriately in the middle life and in the early late life they will be having repeated hospitalization and uh, functional decline which may uh, lead to the reduced resilience and the physical impairment and the cognitive impairment so instead of vaccines uh, childhood or uh, for specific diseases the vaccines are now considered as uh, life course uh, anti aging interventions to lead a dignified late life with independence so some other myths that is uh, whether vaccinating is uh, limiting to being only older adults are benefiting no these older adults may come in touch with the younger people uh, they are usually the younger men uh, younger younger children are born sterile uh, sterile in younger age so the water adults who may be carriers or carrying infection can transmit the infection to the younger people so this will act as a barrier in preventing the infections so there is a concept of immunosenescence so you are talking about immunosenescence and then how the vaccine is prevented there are uh, techniques like high dose formation and there are adjuvants added to the older adult population so they will elicit the optimal immune response that's why one of the reasons that live vaccines or we can't give more live vaccines to older adults so what are the what are the vaccine candidates there is a pneumococcal vaccine and there are two types of vaccine can it should be given to the older adults as the polysaccharide vaccine uh, alone cannot uh, offer a complete protection against all the zero types and influenza vaccine once in a year and the tetanus vaccine uh, booster every 10 years and the tdap we call this diphtheria tetanus and pertussis every 10 years after 65 years of age the zoster vaccine there is recombinant zoster vaccine two doses six months support uh, to give there are special cases where in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease and undergoing dialysis or chronic kidney disease we will vaccinate for hepatitis b and a apart from that patient who was hepatitis c positive we can give hepatitis b and a and covid 19 vaccination we have to give precautionary dose or other doses uh, as per the local guidelines and the schedule as we are in coming to terms with the covid vaccination and covid disease uh, still date and this is a pneumococcal vaccine some people vaccinate just one pneumococcal vaccine is one dose is enough there are two pneumococcal vaccine as i told uh, the vaccine new persons over 65 years of age uh, pcg 13 should be given first followed by after one year we can give polysaccharide vaccine that is ppsv 23 person who received ppsv 23 at 65 uh, years of age we can uh, give uh, more than one year the uh, pcg 13 that is not ppsv 23 it is pcv 13 so if someone says i have before 65 years i have received uh, PPSV 23, so there is no issue. At least one year of gap, and uh, after 65 years, the first dose of uh, PCV 13 should be given. After one year, the 23 valence should be given. Then every five years, you have to give PPSV 23. There is only one 23 valence vaccine. So uh, I'm just talking from India. So I'm just talking on uh, Indian perspective. Sometimes, so there is lack of national guideline. There is lack of uh, perceived benefit, and uh, there are convenience at some time because old adults has to come again and thinking of uh, what i get a fever so there is low and consequence there is multiple issues preventing the uniform guideline uh, for the old adults so what are the barriers is uh, not from one point there is multiple from the surveillance from the health uh, patient patient from the government and the social uh, sector lack of uh, surveillance and uh, lack of guidelines lack of recording system there is missed opportunities for vaccination and the cost sometimes people may not afford and lack of provider recommendations uh, lack of awareness among the healthcare people or healthcare workers 
and hesitancy to take the vaccine that i don't why why i should take the vaccine uh, among the uh, every among the patients so how to promote vaccination there is you no know, uh, one way so in the western world now there are uniform guidelines and policies where the older adults must and there is vaccination schedule for older adults they must follow and they have to take in elmic countries or so in other countries doctor's recommendation is the most important factor in improving the rates they can create awareness to the people and uh, improving hospital discharge vaccination compliance there is if patient is not having any acute infectious states or uh, admitting getting admitted for any elective procedures while being discharged it can stop vaccination you can give uh, pneumonia plus flu vaccination for example and you can uh, discharge them so there can be a vaccination can be escalated among the uh, population and compliance can be restored to some extent so this will be my take home message so the vaccination is not uh, limited to child or adult so it is considered as a life uh, life course uh, initiation so it is one of the important to uh, change the view of the healthcare from the sick care to healthcare or even in more optimally public health and uh, it is one of the effective anti aging intervention there are barriers to adult vaccination are numerous and uh, it is the duty of the healthcare workers and the policy makers to uh, duty to turn the existing vaccines into the campaign of vaccination thank you thank you uh, doctor but uh, i have few questions for example uh, as you said in your first slide uh, the change in the aging healthy yeah. aging in different kind of people you will find a uh, different kind of aging yeah okay like uh, you you saw uh, uh, there was two pictures both with a 60 year old lady one who looks older than the other one so yeah. according to you nowadays compared to uh, 20 years back how how is aging different do you think nowadays the way people are aging or better or more healthier compared to 20 years uh, back on uh, it is worst it is the answer comes in uh, two fold uh, i would say definitely better one well, first thing is we are uh, that is uh, uh, escalating awareness among the healthcare workers and others because of population expense the demographic shift we are understanding the impacts of aging uh, before 20 years there is a limited technological advancement uh, if they have to go one if one place to some place uh, they have to wait the transportation is less primarily the access to healthcare uh, is very limited nowadays you can uh, get a teleconsultation you can call anyone for help so the access to healthcare the access to uh, uh, immediate health attention has uh, become easier so it is definitely get better uh, but it has to still has to go a longer way long yes way. but what about people who are having more sedentary lifestyle eat eating fast food this or this stuff are having lots of impact in our lifestyle nowadays because you can see obesity people instead of riding bicycles they go by car uh, they don't they don't have time to for uh, evening exercise or even morning sometimes they don't even have time to cook so then they tend to eat fast food more and healthy diet sedentary lifestyle what is your point of view for this kind So I was telling you that nowadays people are having more sedentary lifestyle, more fast food, and uh, I can f- see that younger people are getting cardiovascular problems, uh, high cholesterol, diabetic, compared to the previous. Uh, previously, previously we, we were focusing on people above 60, but nowadays you see even at the age of 30 or 40, people are getting this kind of disease. and of course of the sedentary lifestyle for 
fast food they will be with more stress so how do you think do you think this will affect us later on when we are going to uh, to go to the to to grow old do you think this will affect us
yeah so so for them this side effect is much more than the long term uh, prevention of other illness so what is your advice to this kind of so uh, it is a more of a, as i got, uh, i got told uh, earlier it is due to the lack of awareness and lack of uh, perceived benefit the most of the immediate side effects are very minimal and they are maximum they are uh, just uh, uh, limited to the uh, pain in the local site or fever uh, which is very limited from the 15 to 20 percent which can be easily Uh, treated or uh, uh, treated with the uh, Tylenol or uh, over the counter Tylenol paracetamol with the over the counter. Maybe it lasts the uh, one or two days. Considering the benefits, like uh, you are not having reducing benefits in terms of getting serious infection, getting admitted to a ICU, getting the lesser chance of getting a ventilator for a lung infection, or reducing the length of hospital stay. so these are all having health benefit not only having the health benefits but the economical and financial benefits because if someone having a, suppose or someone is having 10 days of uh, icu days or ventilator days they are uh, in older population obviously they are uh, uh, they will depend on some other so someone who is having uh, employing for the family have to take holidays are leave to take care of the water of the population okay. so, uh, so uh, in, the, in india in india do, do they do, do they have a planning for vaccination for free for the public elderly population it is uh, varies from institution and institution so in india there is both the public and private uh, health care in public uh, health care institutions like where i have uh, studied the vaccination is of free of cost and okay, some so other they, I, they have a plan as if uh, the elderly they get a card and say okay this year i did i, did, I was vaccinated next year will be vaccinated again for this is is vaccine do they have a planning like this you know like we have for for like children? a skill. universal immunization immunization schedule you were asking yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah unfortunately unfortunately no but there are uh, you are pushing and uh, uh, stepping up towards that maybe in the coming years it will come uh, to uh, come live hopefully okay 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 so oh, uh, do you think um, the population uh, when they come at the age of 40 or 50 do you think they should start planning for their aging for their old age for their retirement for to know how they will uh, how they have to live their life you know because it's just a change you you are working 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 you, you get you get you go out of the house you meet lots of people and then at the age of 60 or 65 you have to to stay at home then you started getting old or the depression lots of disease come do you think we have to get mentally prepared to all these things yeah definitely planning should not be uh, a growing old should not be limited to just growing old or limited to health they have to learn much in the show they have to plan socially also where they want to do their finances their expenses their social security and their social circles also that is what is meant by the healthy aging preserving your uh, intrinsic capacity there is physical and mental aspect of health as well as the environmental part which is society social and environment and circles okay okay so um, thank you a lot doctor uh, for your intervention it was uh, very fruitful and uh, i think it will be very helpful for the elderly Uh, it is uh, I think it is live on Facebook for the time being, and then they will have the link. The, we have a University of Sir H Mauritius by Global Rainbow Foundation. Uh, then uh, we focus on the people who are retired who, who wants to learn something from the University of Sir H. So thank you for sharing your expert knowledge. Uh, we wish to work with you all in the future. We'll stay in contact and thank you a lot for your intervention.
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Devla. Thank you for an opportunity for share of what I know a little. And I sincerely apologize for the technical glitch happening with me. So hopefully in future I will try to prevent that.